Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for joining and giving your valuable time and association this morning and enlightening us on the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam. 7th Canto, 6th Chapter, 4th Verse, Maharaj, Hari Bol. Can you please unmute yourself, Maharaj? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Can you make the letters a little bigger? A little too small. One more. There you go. Okay. Tat prayosa nakarta vyohu yatra yor vyavaha param nakata vindate shemam bukundu charanam bujam. Translation Endeavors merely for sense gratification or material happiness through economic development are not to be performed, but they result only in a loss of time and energy with no actual profit. If one endeavors are directed towards Krishna consciousness, one can surely attain the spiritual platform of self-realization. There is no such benefit for from engaging oneself in economic development. Purport. We see materialistic persons busily engage in economic, economic development all day and all night, trying to increase their material opulence. But even if we suppose that they get some benefit from such endeavors, solve the real problem of life nor do they know what is the real problem of life is. This is due to a lack of spiritual education. Mm. Especially in the present age, every man is in darkness in the bodily conception of life, not knowing anything of the spirit soul and its needs. Misguided by the blind leaders of society, people consider the body to be everything they are engaged in trying to keep the body materially comfortable. Such a civilization is condemned because it does not lead humanity towards knowing the real goal of life. People are simply wasting time and the valuable gift of the human form because a human being who does not cultivate spiritual life but dies like the cats and dogs is degraded in his next life. From human life, such a person is put into the cycle of continuous birth and death. Uh, one loses the true benefit of human life, which is to become Krishna conscious and solve life's problems. In the Gyan to Midandasya. That's my Sri Gurvena Maha. Mom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalai. Shri Vakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyat Yude Santarine Anshakopatu Bishakri Basindupe Bacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadakhar, Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. Mm. So, 8,400,000 species of life is explained by the Shastras. Five categories, including 400,000 species of human forms. And most of the species of the human forms are subhuman. 
more when we say not very advanced. There are a few advanced species. But the cycle of some sort of birth and death is a continuous one for the soul. To take birth means to die. To die means to take birth again. So this cycle, Maya Bhavache, Kaso Beche, Kaso Hau Bhuvu Bhuvai, Jeev Krishna Dasa, E Vishwas, Palinara Duganai. That people don't know and that this uh, purpose of human life is not to chase after the temporary happiness provided by the material energy. The purpose of human life is to understand self-realization or to understand who you are. Unless one asks the question, what is the purpose of life? Why do I have to suffer in this life? Why do I have to die? Why do I have to get old? The people will go on trying to use their time, energy, facilities in order to improve their present material situation. This verse is spoken by Sri Narada Muni and he is actually actually it's spoken by Lord Brahma but he's, she's, he's speaking to Sri Narada Muni that endeavors to improve one's happiness and distress in this life are futile. Why? Because what is that? Because everyone is destined by their birth to achieve a certain amount of happiness and a certain amount of distress materially. No one can change the amount of happiness they get materially and the amount of distress that is due to them. The only way they can make any change is they have to engage in the activities of transcendence, something that is beyond the modes of material energy or spiritual realization. But people don't know this, and the whole purpose or the whole focus of the human form of life in the world is to increase happiness and push back the stress. If we look at the world today, and take a more or less a contemporary view of what is presently happening, we will see that there is so much suffering, problems, conflicts, and so many things. Yet everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to pull down back, pull down back the stress. But it's not possible. Why? Because material energy gives you, according to your karmic encounter, they give you what you... So here, Prabhupada said, even if they do get a little benefit from such endeavors to improve by economic development, what is the value of but what is that improvement that may happen? It's not really an improvement. It's simply changing the face of how happiness and distress manifest. So just to give you given an example, you're living in a very cold area. You say most of the year it's quite cold. Maybe in places like, you know, very northern countries, maybe even in places like the North Pole or Greenland and something like that. And you think, boy, why do I have to suffer from the cold? Why don't I just move to a nice tropical area and avoid all of this suffering that comes by way of cold weather? A person may do, do that. 
And so you might think, oh, well, they're re reducing their distress. No, you can't because you may also find that that person will get that same distress they're due in a different form. They may do something or find themselves in a situation where that distress will come, not by way of the miseries of cold weather, but in another form. So that's why that this verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, first chapter 15, first canto, fifth chapter, verse number 18, describes that, you know, it's your happiness is going to come. Your distress is going to come. Don't worry about that. It'll come automatically. Try to go beyond that and get what is called real happiness, and that happiness that is not based on the activities of the mind, the intelligence, and the senses in contact with the external energy. What does that have? That is Brahma Shokam. And that's why. Uh, Rishab they will say, Nayan Deho Deho Bhajan Niyaloke Kastan Karma Ariti Vid Bhujan Jay Tipo Divyam Bhutta Gajanit Sadvam Brahma Sokam Twanantam. That this Brahma Shokam is Twanantam. But to work hard day and night simply to improve one's material situation. Is compared in this verse to the the lives of hogs and dogs who simply work, simply to uh, uh, gain something from the material and in their endeavor. But a human being is meant for self-realization. The body of the human being is somewhat conducive to self-realization, where the body and other species of life is not. So to get a human form, one might think, well, yeah, there are so many human beings and we're all, you know, we all have human forms. So what's the big thing? Actually, it is a big thing because it's rare. Mm -hmm. One may not be, be aware of it, but to get human life is very rare. It's even mentioned in the Shastras. So, and to get advanced human life when one, when one has the intelligence to inquire into the goal of human life, that's even rarer, yeah. And to get the opportunity to come in contact with the process of awakening one's self as a spiritual being separate from the material body is even rarer. And to take advantage of that process and become self-realized is most rare. Extremely. That's why Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Sri Rupa Goswami des describes it. One of the six characteristics of pure devotional service that is extremely rare. He doesn't use it just in an ordinary sense. He says it's very, very rare. But if one gets that opportunity, just like if one is born in a in a very rich family, then one if one simply stays in the family, at the end of the life of the of the elders, the parents, they inherit the fortune. So in the same way, if one is, somehow or other comes in contact with devotional service. It's very, very rare. And that is a great fortune because it is the means to solve all the problems of, of material life. And material life is simply a problem. Material, we say sometimes we use the word material life. That life that is based on the body, the mind, the senses, the intelligence, the, the activities and that go on in the name of gaining something from one's material endeavor. But that life is no better than the hogs and dogs. That's why uh, Hushabde makes that statement. He says, you know, the only way you can get out of this hog and dog life is to perform some austerity. 
what is that austerity? Stop chasing material life and start looking for and pointing your focus towards self-realization. And as is mentioned here, people are wasting time and value in the human form because human form does but does the, who does not cultivate spiritual life dies like cats and dogs and finds themselves in a very demeaning position in their next life. So um, therefore one should not take spiritual life to be for granted. One should not take spiritual life to be something routine. Spiritual life is so rare, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself in this age, has has turned that rarity into something very, what we say, easily available. That's the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his most magnanimous form, Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauda Tristena Maha. The Lord manifests himself in different ways. He manifests himself as the spiritual master. He manifests himself as the indwelling super soul. And by these two features, the super soul and by the spiritual master, guides the living entity back to him in pure devotional service. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given the process very easily. When Krishna was personally present, he spoke the Bhagavad Gita, which is the foundation of all transcendental knowledge. In that speaking, he discussed many topics, who he is, what is the jiva, the living entity in the material world, how this material world works, how the time factor is the, the uh, what we say, unnoticeable force, power within the material world, and what is karma and how it works. But and then Krishna ends all of his talks in the discussion with his pure devotee Sri Arjun. Based on this topic, he ends by saying, Sarvadharma predicts a jam mame kam saranam rajam aham tvam sarvapape bil moksha yishyami nasu chaha. He says, give up all of your ideas on how you can be happy in this world, all of your plans, all of your so called uh, programs, and simply surrender to me. Follow me. I'll take care of you. I'll bring you to the path of enlightenment. And by that path, you will achieve perfection. Krishna may says that. But then, when Krishna was reflecting on his words, he saw that what he had said was seemed to be too difficult for people to do. Oh, surrender to God. Give up all of my ideas on how I can be happy. Oh, what does that mean? People had didn't have that kind of faith, nor did they have any uh, understanding of how to proceed, and even if they wanted to. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took, made it easy. He said, don't worry about surrender. Just chant Hare Krishna. Make that chanting your main activity in life. And offer your food before you eat. Everyone has to eat every day. And eating is a, is a very normal and a frequent thing that the living entity does for nourishment and also for sustenance, for happiness, for longevity. He said, offer your food to me. And he said, also, uh, understand me through philosophical teachings that are given by me through the spiritual master, my representative, the pure devotee, and through the scriptures, which are coming from me directly. <laughs> and so he made the process very easy, but still people find it too difficult. Still they find so many reasons why not to take up the process. 
Taking up the cross is, is not simply like getting a job in the material world. <laughs> it cannot be compared to taking up the process means to understand that this taking up the process means a solution to all problems of life eternally and ultimately achieving the perfection of life, loving devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is the constitutional nature of all living beings. Jivir Surubai Krishna Nitya Das. Whatever species of life the soul inhabits, whatever body it inhabits, that soul has an eternal loving relationship with the Lord. But only, only in human form of life can that be realized. And here Mahaprabhu has made the process very easy. But still, people don't want to take it up, or they take it up half heartedly. Or they still consider that their material life is more important and they might give some token time represented to the spiritual practice. And they push it aside and spend most of their time working hard for economic gain, for uh, improving the family situation, improving one's uh, situation in the world in relationship to other living entities. And this just goes on no matter, even though people are somewhat aware of the process of devotional service, they're not very serious in their execution. To become serious means to, that uh, here is the formula. It's like, I'll give you, an, give you an ex a personal example on a, using an analogy. I was struggling with a particular ailment, physical ailment, and uh, I've tried so many things, you know, to, to overcome it. It's something, it's something painful. Something, some. Uh, actually, what it was, it was sciatica. So I was struggling with that for years and years and years, trying different things. And then I met one of my god brothers who said, here, here's the remedy. He gave me this medicine. He said, take this and all your problems will be done. And he said it with such surety. I said, all right, I'll try. And in one week after taking the medicine, miraculously, I used the word, all the pain was gone and hasn't returned. Yet the medicine was so powerful and so direct and, so, and was simply some tablets. That's all it was. But because I didn't know what that medicine was or what, where, where it was available, it's like the spiritual master, he comes, he said, here, here's the way. We're trying so many ways to push back the suffering of material life by fortifying ourselves and by surrounding ourselves with so many situations that seem to give us protection and some kind of happiness. But every time things change and we find ourselves back in the same miserable situation. But then the spiritual master will come and say, here, here's the formula. You follow the, my instructions and you make those instructions your most important part of your life. And you'll be free from all of your anxieties and you'll become a fully God conscious, happy person. But um, so... And that's what the spiritual master is here for. He, he teaches us that. So this one-shot medicine worked in such a way that I was over. I was amazed on how fast all of the uh, pain went away and hasn't returned yet. It doesn't seem like it's going to return either. The medicines were so powerful and so direct and so easily applicable and so easily available, but. I was unknown, just like the spiritual master's canvassing. He's going everywhere in the form of his representatives to preach Krishna consciousness to the conditioned souls. But the conditioned souls, just like Srila Prabhupada, <laughs> when he first began <clears throat> Krishna consciousness, before he actually came to America, he was putting together his little magazine called Back to God. And at that time, there was just one sheet of paper on both sides describing different topics of spiritual life and the importance of taking, taking advantage. 
And Prabhupada would have it, he would write it up, he would go to the printers, have it printed, and he would he would do it every everything himself. He would write it, he would edit it, he would go have it printed, he would collect the printing, and he would take it and go to the the tea stalls in Delhi and try to sell each of these little one page copies for a few pice, that's all. And people will say, Oh, Swamiji. What you're doing is very nice, but we have no time. <laughs> we have no time. <laughs> um, and they give reasons why they have no time. But Prabhupada was hearing that quite regularly, and finally he wrote one edition of his paper called No Time. <laughs> People say, well, we got this to do, we got that to do, and this is this is all. Okay. So they they push spiritual life back somewhere back in the back part of their life. And if they have a little time, they give some token token attention to it, which really doesn't give us much satisfaction. Spiritual life is life. Mm -hmm. Material life is simply a shadow of the real life because the, the living entity is not the material body. It's like to hang your coat in the closet and then start talking to your coat and your hat and say, well, are you... You know, he's got the form like a human being. He must have, he must be able to talk to me, you know. And it's that ridiculous. The material life, this material body is simply a prison suit given by material energy because of our desires to enjoy separately for in, the, in this material world. We're given a particular body according to the types of desires we have to enjoy in this material world. And the bodies are formulated life after life according to our activities and desires in the present life. And it becomes cumulative in life after life. So this prison term doesn't end simply at the end of death. It goes on life after life after life until the living entity actually understands, hey, why, why am I have to suffer all the time? Why am I never happy? Or why am I getting happiness just a few flickering uh, experiences and then it's gone? But uh, in the Bhagavad Gita says, Susukam Kartam Avyayam, that this process of the pure devotional service awakens the soul's natural proclivities for eternal happiness. It's there within the soul. Just recently, I saw some advertisement that was called Hacking Happiness with some new adventure come out, come by a few people in the material world. And they, they came up with this idea, here's how you can become happy. And then they created this website called Hacking Happiness. And you go and then they teach you how you can become happy. Um, I didn't really investigate it. Thoroughly, all I heard was the advertisement based on it, on this new idea. It's somewhat of a new idea because it's become somewhat timely now because it's seen it's being seen that people are not happy more than ever nowadays. So much suffering in the world, even day to day. I was just uh, I just came back from India yesterday. Uh, I'm here now in London for one day, and I'll leave London tomorrow and go to the to Croatia and Slovenia. But when I was coming in in the car with my driver, he was explaining how in London now they're taxing people for everything. <laughs> There's this tax and that tax, another tax, a congestion tax for the inner city. Now they got congestion tax for the outer city. So many things. Bhagavatam says that material life will continue to become more and more difficult and where people will get so frustrated being harassed by the present material civilization in the form of the leadership that they'll leave their hearth and home and go to the forest just to escape the harassment given by the, by the present government situation. That is the predictions for the age of Kali. Not only is material life 
innately suffered, innately suffering, but it's being exasperated by the present material situation in the form of this Kali Yuga by misleaders who have no understanding of how to govern their, the leaders, leaders in this world. So spiritual life is the only solution. It's the only way out. And is the real, and, and Mahaprabhu has made it so easily available. Take, take advantage of Mahaprabhu's process. Read Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, Nectar of Devotion. These four books comprise a lifetime worth of reading, not a lifetime, many lifetimes worth of reading. And it gives you the whole formula. But to make it easy and summarize it, and the shelter of Krishna, a pure representative, and work under the guidance of the pure representative. Elevate your consciousness simply by his instructions and ultimately achieve the goal of human life, which is a prema pumarka mahan, which is to develop our love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It can't be done simply by one's own ideas. It has to be done according to Krishna's plan. And Krishna plan is already given in the form of accepting the bona fide spiritual master as the means for achieving self-realization, perfection, and God consciousness. So that's the mercy. And that's the mercy that's there in this scene. So we might say, as Bhagavatam says, that in this age of Kali, there are so many problems. Kaler Doshani De Rajana Asti Eko Mahagun. But then again, there is that Mahagun. What is that echo? Maha ek, uh, Asti echo. Kirtana ever Krishna siya mukta sangha and pradanga By chanting the holy names of the Lord and following the process of the pure devotional service as given by the spiritual master, one can rid themselves of all the difficulties and sufferings that come by way of material life, rise above that and come to the position of pure, pure consciousness which is the actual consciousness of the living entity. It's been covered by the association of Maya. <laughs> Coming back to who we really are is the process of pure devotion and souls. Okay, so let me stop there. Hare <laughs> Krishna Maharaj. Dandavat Pranam. Aribo. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, how is your Shatika pain now? Gone completely, 100%. Aribo, Aribo, Aribo. Maharaj, maybe you can share that uh, medicine because my mom is suffering with that too. And I know it is so bad. She cries when it is there. It is so bad. It's very, this medicine is miraculous. I was, when I would cough, I would get pains all the way down to my feet from the, from my so legs what? all the way down. Severe shooting pains. Now all so what, the, yeah. what she experiences is the same thing, Maharaj, starting from here up to the toe, you know, of the foot, foot it's all painful. So painful, Maharaj. But wow. This, this is, this medicine was given to me by a devotee who, he, he helps devotees through various types of, you know, advices in medicine. And he was just my personal friend and I spent some time with him. Um, wow. Yeah, make it known. You can just contact me. And, you know. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. That would be very nice, Maharaj. Because I think so many, so many people uh, suffer with this Shatika thing. Very painful. It's yeah, very painful. Anything. My experience is it works. Mm, Perfect. I was I was amazed to see how fast it worked. True I, took, I took the you take two tablets two times a day, which is four tablets, and after a week, not even a week, it was completely gone. Hari bol, hari bol. Jaya Shila Prabhupada. Hari bol, hari bol. The Very nice. The prescription is you take it for two weeks and you stop for two weeks and then if you find it's coming back for whatever re reason you can continue otherwise you don't need the medicine anymore mm -hmm. 
I will ask Shama Gauri Mata Ji to send you a message and then you can send it. And later I will ask her. Thank you, Maharaj. Very beautiful. Yeah. I'll send Maharaj. a picture. I'll send a picture of the of the of the of the of the thing. Yeah, yes, that will work, Maharaj. That will work. Maharaj, you were saying uh, you were traveling to India yesterday. You are in London today, and tomorrow you are going somewhere else. Yeah. Too much traveling, Maharaj. You are also parivaraja <laughs> kacharya. Too much traveling and preaching, Maharaj. It's um we stop occasionally. Yeah, but Maharaj, yeah. give give time to your health too, Maharaj. With shatika pain and everything, you know, Maharaj, it's so so hard on the body too. Please, please take care of your health also, Maharaj. Don't worry, that is a consideration. And thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. But thank you. Uh, spiritual life is is life. Tending to this body is important and it's need necessary, but it shouldn't interfere with our spiritual life. Thank you, Maharaj. That's a that's a inspiration, Maharaj. Maharaj, our Shivakumar Prabhuji has a hand raised. So we'll go to Koshna's session, Maharaj, if you have a few minutes, please. Shivakumar Prabhu, Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna, Prabhu, Dandavat Prams, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, Dandavat Prams, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Maharaj, one question, Maharaj, of uh, the two, pleasure and pain, uh, any specific reason, Maharaj, we, I mean, our understanding from Sastra is both are illusions. Uh, but uh, in our uh, practice, we seem to emphasize that the pleasure is uh, illusion. And uh, we kind of we kind of caution uh, on the pain that we go through, Maharaj. I just wanted to understand any specific reason that we take this stand. Well, the understanding is, according to Shastra, is that... Pain and pleasure is relegated to the body. And we are not the body. We are in the body. What happens to the body doesn't happen to you, the soul. But because you're in the body, and the body is very dear to the soul because it's the place of residence for the soul, we uh, we experience these things as ple pleasure and pain. But those who are, the more become, the more you become realized, in yourself as a spiritual being, the more you can transcend the effects of pleasure and pain. Yes, for people in the material world, they undergo greater suffering than devotees who have the similar types of suffering because the devotees are somewhat detached from their body and they somehow tolerate the pain. And they may also lessen the pain simply by the process of devotional service. Prabhupada also has explained that, and it works. He says, chanting relieves pain. And so it's not something artificial or some kind of idea just to get people to take up spiritual life. The more you come to the platform of the soul, the more you get away from the effects of the body more and more. So there is always that element of tolerance, but you know, I've seen people who have undergone tremendous pain. Just like, for example, our great devotee Bhakti Tirtha Swami, before he was leaving the body, he was he was undergoing tremendous pain. He had cancer that went into the bones. And when, when the bones become cancerous, their pain is Unbelievable. But yet, when he was hearing, you know, Chaitanya Charitamrita and the, the pastimes of Krishna, he was he was experiencing transcendental happiness. So much so that he was he was beyond the effects of the pain. He was simply living in the consciousness of the transcendental words that were coming in the form of what we say nectar. On the on the eternal life of the soul, free from this connection with the material body. So the more we become Krishna conscious, the less we experience the pains and pleasure of this world. It's all in the matter of degree, also too. That's why you know when people in the material world are dying. 
and there's pain, they give him all kinds of drugs to numb the pain. But devotees don't do that. Devotees say, no, let the pain come. That way I can burn off some of my last, some of the last karma that I have before I can leave this world. <laughs> because pain is another way to burn off karma. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's a, yeah, so it's a way to get rid of the reactions of karma. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, uh, Maharaj, just just to confirm, Maharaj, um, of these two, Maharaj, uh, the we kind of seem to be insisting that the pleasure is an illusion, whereas the pain is real, and uh, we are kind of cautioning us. So, I just wanted to understand, Maharaj, oh, when both are illusion. No, they're both the same. They're both mm. both relegated to the body. In the mm. sense, the mind, body, senses, and mind. Mm -hmm. They're both they're both opposite of the same same principle of mm. bodily life. That's all. Mm. And the perception of what is pain and what is present, and what is pain and what is pleasure, is different from person to person. Also. Thank you so much. We say one man's food is another man's poison. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu, for the there beautiful is. question. Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful answers. Devotee find a purpose in the pain. That she is as a mercy of Krishna. Padam padam yata vipadam na desham. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful answer. I Maharaj, have a we... question. Mataji, uh, can we go to the... Uh, one devotees who have hand raised and we will come to you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Krishna, uh, Krishna Kaviraj Prabhuji, Dhanu Pranam. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, when we are endeavouring to make progress in the spiritual life and we, we take the association of devotees, and sometimes we see that devotees are very experienced or appear to be experienced serving nicely, have a nice knowledge of Shastra. But sometimes we get advice from various devotees that seems to go against the teachings and advice of the spiritual master. So how can we understand this and how can we deal with this, Guru Maharaj? Well, then when you seek out advice, you should seek out that source who can give you the advice. Therefore, when you go for advice, you should go to that authority who can, who is authorized to give advice. Not you take advice from everyone. People may have different perceptions on how to give advice according to the situation. If you you tell you ask a person, you ask one person about advice on a particular topic, you might get three or four different answers by different people. But if you go to the spiritual master or someone who is has a reputa reputation to be able to help devotees, they're established in that process of giving advice. In other words, the persons who are uh, actually understanding the process of devotional service and are living according to that those teachings, those are the persons you want to seek advice from. Not anybody and everybody, even though they may be in the dress of devotees. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Nice question. That was a nice question, actually. Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful answer. We should go to our senior uh, congregation devotees or uh, the speakers, Maharajas, and, and uh, yeah, certainly. The, People you uh, know... Yes, who, who are authorities who can give advice, not just anybody. Not just anyone. True, true, Maharaj. Very true. Very true. One who has seen the truth. Uh, Maharaj, Shri Devi Mataji, Hare Krishna Mataji, Nano Pranam. Mataji, we see you every time Maharaj is here, but see, give your darshan often, Mataji, please, because you are such a beautiful devotee. Thank you, Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. Thank you for today's class. 
uh, Maharaj, we understand that uh, once we are given this seed of devotional service that we must cultivate it carefully, that is a very great gift given to us. And devotee no longer is interested in running after material things. But as we engage in devotional service, uh, we find that we are not so good at it or not so great at it. And there's a feeling of dissatisfaction. I could have done this better or I should have done this better. And in every situation, oh, my japa could have been better or my service could have been better. So you end up thinking, oh, when am I ever going to feel satisfied? Because in every area I could have done better and I'm not. So how do we feel a sense of satisfaction in devotional service? Try your best. Be sincere. Follow the process. Krishna explains that to Brahma. This is mentioned in the very end of the book. Uh, uh, you can turn to that. Uh, go to Brahma Samhita. Can you can you bring up Brahma Samhita uh, five fifty nine? Well, Krishna, after hearing Brahma's prayers and his prayers of self-realization based on his um, the knowledge he received from Krishna. Krishna responds, and this verse is really like a summation, 559. The highest devotion is attained by slow degrees, by the method of constant endeavor for self-realization with the help of scriptural evidence, Theistic conduct and perseverance in practice. So this is the words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he's giving a three-point. He summarizes everything. Highest is attained by slow degrees. By, const, by, met, by a method of constant endeavor for self-realization. The word constant is that. One is following the process continuously, getting help from scriptural evidence, which comes also from both uh, the spiritual master and from the and from the acharyas. Proper behavior, theistic conduct, we might say uh, Vaishnav etiquette, and determination, perseverance, and practice. Prabhupada emphasizes this perseverance and practice as the means for success in devotional service. And Rupa Goswami similarly says the same thing in so many different words. Enthusiasm, determination, patience, following the process, taking help from the acharyas and from scripture. So these are the guidelines or I know not guidelines, but these are the means by which we follow the process. So we can ask questions based on these principles that are me mentioned here, but these are the essential principles. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Guru Hare Krishna. Very beautiful, very beautiful question, Mataji. That actually, uh, we all uh, have that question in mind sometimes. So, thanks for bringing up that question. And, Mara, such a beautiful evidence you gave 5.59 right from the Shastras Brahma Samhita. So, dear devotees, please later go and see 5.59 if we all are, you know, having these questions in our mind. Thank you, Maharaj. Such a beautiful, such a beautiful evidence. Thank you, Mataji, again for asking. Maharaj, we have VRM Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Dhanav Pranam. Sorry, I had to put me yeah. back in line because there were a few devotees. Sorry, I, I seek apologies, Mataji. Thank you. Mataji, you're on mute, Mataji only. You're on mute. We can't hear you. Hare Thank Krishna. Dhanvat Rana. My name yes. is Varija and I'm joining from India. My question to Maharaji is uh, that you uh, mentioned that pleasure and pain is subjective and, you know, pleasure for one person can be uh, pain for another and vice versa. But what if, uh, you know, you see your own loved one, uh, you know, facing, you know, some health challenges or some uh, pain, but, uh, you know, they're not taking, um, you know, steps or they are taking steps, but not fully able to overcome it. And how do you deal with that uh, feeling where you feel the pain 
in the suffering of your own loved one uh, but you aren't able to do it even though even do much even though you want to do it do something to help them but you aren't able to really help them well just tell them to chant the holy names that's all <laughs> cuz then they can transcend the whole process they may go on with their health remedies they should do that but at the same time take shelter of the holy name of course we don't take shelter of the holy name to get rid of get rid of material pain or to bring material pleasure but we actually rise above the uh, the three modes of material energy which are the cause of the material suffering and the material pleasure so when we bring our consciousness to a higher state of existence we somehow or other uh not only do we uh, somehow mitigate the, the suffering but at the same time we are actually connecting with that higher energy and therefore we're actually feeling happiness although we may be undergoing some physical difficulty so difficult physical difficulty is there as long as we have a material body it's going to be there the fact that the body is the source of pain and pleasure no one can get around that but then again but we have the opportunity to, to rise above it through the process of spiritual awareness spiritual attainment but these are these are just what we say byproducts the real process for the real purpose of taking up spiritual life is to realize god And even, so even some of the most the patients who are dying in so many different ways but if they're devotees even though they're dying they're, they're thinking oh i'm going to go back to krishna because i gave my life to krishna they don't even care whether they're whether they're undergoing suffering because their destination is no longer a material body but a transcendental existence Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare. Thank you, Vira Mataji. Thank you for joining all the way from India. Yeah, certainly it's a very difficult, uh, you know, when we see our uh, loved ones in pain. But then uh, certainly what Maharaj said is that is, and, uh, that is the only thing I think we should clang to. And what we can do other than that, right, Mataji? Sometimes we are just in the hands of gods, like puppets, you know, like Srila Prabhupada says, na chao, na chao, Prabhu, na chao, re mate. So thank a you. Real a real devotee sees all living beings as non-different to themselves, not just their family members, friends, and acquaintances. They see the sufferings of the living beings around the world, and they also feel unhappy because of that. And because they feel unhappy, they want to do something to relieve people's suffering. We're all connected through to each other by Krishna through the process of devotion to Krishna. So Thank we, you. we give emphasis on our friends, family members, and others, but ultimately, one who is practicing devotional service sees everyone as their family members. <laughs> Not just this particular, because I have a particular body and this other person has a body connected with mine. These people are important and the rest of the world is, is not. No. So true, Maharaj. So true. This is coming not, purely from uh, your own practices of Krishna consciousness all your life, Maharaj. That is showing there. Yes, Maharaj. A different level, Maharaj. True, Maharaj. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Maharaj, Bhikkhu Prabhuji, Bhikkhu Parmar Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Danva Paranam. Hare Krishna. Firstly, my Danva, our Danva Pranams to Maharaj. Uh, welcome in London. And uh, my wife has to share something so she can proceed. Thank you for your time. Hare Krishna, all devotees. And Hare Krishna Maharaj. Welcome to your Krishna's home, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Anyway, today is the topic of the pain. So I'm sharing with uh, 
my experience to other people. It will help them, I think. So I am saying, age 77, I've got uh, knee pain. And, uh, I, with pain, we did uh, two retreats. Uh, one is South India for one month and one another. So it, it makes uh, worse. And before the retreat, my son took me to the physiotherapist for the permission whether I can travel or not. But uh, he gave me two physios and then test everything. And he said, yeah, she can, no problem. And then when I came, the pain was very, very severe. I was, I can't take the uh, pain. Hardly I walk uh, in the house even. And then my son and his wife, they are both in medi medicals. They took me the, uh, to the uh, uh, joint specialist and they did a lot of research. And he was the uh, good uh, consultant. So he checked everything and did the x-rays. And he, he told me, uh, you can't do the operation or anything. You can take the painkiller or a steroids or that this is nothing. And believe me, Prabhuji, I was really crying like your mom was crying. I said, no way, doctor, don't, don't treat me like this. And he was young like my son. I said, I treat you like my son. If your mother, would you live like her in the pain? I said, all life we work very hard. And now time has come to enjoy, do the retreat. So he has got mercy. He says, okay, I do the MRI scan. And he did that scan. And then he told me, you can do the operation if you want to. Before he told me, no, not to do operation or anything. It's, it's, it is old, old days. But anyway, he did the operation and uh, it was short. And then immediately yeah. I said, no, I don't, I want to do the operation. So, well, and he, master is the, he's the doctor, he's doing the operation. Yeah. And it, <laughs> the disease is material life. <laughs> yeah. And he explained the, well, the solution is spiritual life. Yes. Your yeah. pains and pleasures will come and go. As the seasons come and go, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Martha Sparsis to Kuntaya, Sitnos Na Sukadukada, Agapayino Nitya's Tantikiks. Happiness and distress, pain and pleasure are like the coming and going of the winter and summer seasons. They rise from sense perception, and one has to learn to tolerate them without becoming disturbed. Keep your consciousness connected with the spiritual. And then whatever experiences you're having on the material level, you know, you can deal with them. You will, yeah. But the real thing is, even if we have a very healthy body, we have big muscles and we have a success in doing so many things in life, if we're not Krishna conscious, we die and take birth as an animal in the next life. But even if we're suffering so much, physically in this life, if we connect with Krishna through devotional service, then we can go back home and get rid of all of these material bodies and all of the material pains that come along with it. But what, we shouldn't be so much concerned about these material things. I mentioned my situation as an example, how that one one particular remedy remedy can cure a disease, and what is that remedy? The words of the spiritual master: the disease is bhavarog, material life. That is the real disease. Mm -hmm. People are suffering in this material world because they don't know why they're suffering or how to get out of their suffering. They're trying everything, and doctors, all of the good do-gooders in the material world can't solve the problem. The only problem, the problem is that we have a material body. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> that is the problem.
So make this your last life in the material world and go back to the spiritual world. That's available for everyone by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and by his representatives who are canvassing everywhere to take up take up this this real medicine. Inechi, Asadi Maya, Nasi Bharalagi, Harinama Maha Mantra, Lao Tumi Magi, and Bhakti Vinota Kohid. Inechi, Asadi, what is Asadi? Asadi means medicine. What is that medicine? Harinam Sankirta, chanting the holy name. That is the medicine in this age. <laughs> And that gets rid of all of the all of the diseases of material existence, which come by way of living in this world. We get rid of one pain, another one comes. We get a healthy body, and people give us a hard time. We so if we don't suffer with our mind and body, we suffer because other people are giving us pain. Yeah, if we don't suffer from uh, other people giving us pains, then the then the material energy in the form of calamities come. Cold, heat, rain, tornadoes, and so many things. <laughs> Snowstorms. Now you can't get around this stuff. <laughs> what can you do? We're all doing preventative medicine, but our medicine is not working. <laughs> There's only one medicine. The holy name. That's the medicine in this age. <laughs> Take serious the chanting of the holy name. And you'll be able to rise above all of the difficulties that come by way of living in this material world. It's not a euphemism or some idea. It, it is a principle of reality. The holy name is the medicine of the yeah, thank you from Baba Baba Kripa. I have brought the medicine that will wipe up the disease of illusion by which way you are. It's the disease is illusion. We're still thinking this world, this material body, and if we can somehow make the material body put it in a better situation, then we, 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 we become successful. But how long will that situation last? Even if you make some change, then after some time you, you get another disease and then you get, then you, di then you die. <laughs> With people who die healthy, still they have, they died because they have a material body. That's the problem, and there's a way out of that problem. Lord Chaitanya has come; he's giving it. He's brought his associates. And he didn't come alone. He came with his entourage, with his paraphernalia, with his eternal associates. He teach the whole process, Harinam Sankirtan. That's the process. And Srimad Bhagavatam, all the answers are there. Everything is there. Do whatever you have to do to maintain this body, live in this world. But realize that whatever you do is subject to, you know, it's not really the solution. The real solution is. Krishna consciousness or God consciousness. That's the solution. Thank you, Mara. That's what we read all the time. And uh, they take me to the uh, uh, theater, uh, operation theater. I was chanting, chanting all the time Maha Mantra. Good. And the anesthetic doctor said, what are you um, chanting? He was Punjabi and another was English. They don't know. I said, I'm doing my <laughs> mom under Hare Krishna. He said, your voice is very nice. I said, you can sing with me. And I, I sing Hare Krishna. And they were singing me. And by the time I was gone, anesthetic. And then when I wake up with one smile, and then they told me to take to the X-ray theater and check everything. He says, everything was fine, everything. Now, doctor said, I did my 50% job. And he told me really strictly, now 50% is your job. You have to take care and do the exercise. So I did all and, uh, yeah, and the patient has become the doctor. Yes, yes. <laughs> and do the Maha Mantra all the time. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Maharaj. That was so beautiful. You bring that up. 
इने छी ओ शादी माया नसी बारो लागी हरि नाम महामंत्रा लाओ तुमी मागी थैंक यू महाराज सो ब्यूटीफुल महाराज यू ब्रिंग दैट अप राइट इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ पेन वी आर ऑल सीकिंग फॉर मेडिसिंस हेमी माता जी हरि बोल माता जी धन्यवाद पर नाम एक रणवीर जी सत माता जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी थैंक यू फॉर अलाउंग मी टू स्पीक धन्यवाद पर नाम महाराज थैंक यू फॉर योर क्लास आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन अराउंड एंगर so i do understand it is an anartha and we have to overcome it and uh, with chanting and listening to bhagavatam and classes i have significantly improved but if i'm challenged i will i will fall down and so i mean i have understanding theoretical and uh, endeavors i'm making but i mean what should i be doing in the moment when i know i am going to fall down is there something i can do in that moment uh, to to prevent that maraj well you're talking about the antidote for anger <laughs> yes probably yes maraj yeah the bhagavad Bhag- Bhag- gita talks about that there's an antidote for all of the different anarthas anger one has to cultivate forgiveness anger is the it says anger is the younger brother of desire when desire is frustrated or unfulfilled or challenged in some way the principle of anger starts to manifest um and then you learn how to see the situation it's due to your attachment those who have no attachment materially they they can avoid anger because whatever happens they accept it as the arrangement of the world and they said we learn to tolerate it right so so anger is there you see even great souls get anger but they get angry not because of frustrated desires but because people are uh living the life of illusion and they're presenting this illusion as reality <laughs> so learn how to forgive <laughs> when it comes to uh a particular situation where there's other people in wrong and forgiveness is the antidote to anger if you am you know sometimes you have to say well, why am i getting angry what's the cause <laughs> look at you know, bhakti bhakti siddhanta saraswati says gives us a very strong statement he says when other people cause disturbances to you look inside yourself and see what what is about you that's becoming disturbed <laughs> think about that when you see something that's coming disturbing you look in yourself and see why you're becoming disturbed what is it about you <laughs> so we have to learn to uh, maneuver our consciousness in such a way as that we don't become victimized by these uh, emotional outbreaks and that's why we have to control emotions by higher intelligence there was one devotee he he was explosive he used to be very very much prone to anger and so much so that he would even get physical sometimes so then after he joined the hari krishna movement and started practicing for a while i mean he was a very well you would describe as a person who was very confrontational and anybody who would confront him you know there would be would be big problems he was like that but one time someone did something really challenged him and he started to get angry but he checked his anger and somehow remained calm the person said i see you're getting angry he said yes but when well, but, but years ago i would have beat you to a pulp I would have smashed you, but because I'm practicing Krishna consciousness, I'm only getting a little angry now. <laughs> so 
in due course of time, his uh, his temperament started to change. So yeah, we have to, we can see that as we practice Krishna consciousness, lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy, fear, all of these things start to decrease in our life. And when you become fully Krishna conscious, then all of these things are gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. I'll work on myself a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, if you have a few more minutes, we have another couple of hands raised, Maharaj. Yeah, we have Supriya. Right? Th okay. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, okay, Maharaj, yes, we can go with Supriya Mataji. Hare Krishna, Supriya Mataji, Dhanva Pranam. And then later we have Shri Devi Mataji. Hare Krishna, uh, Maharaj, uh, Dhanva Pranam, accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, you mentioned in uh, Bhagavatam, these anarthas are mentioned and their solution you also mentioned. I have not read all uh, complete Bhagavatam yet, so can you please tell us where exactly I can find it? Yeah, it's in the seventh canto. For sure. Um, uh, I remember reading some of some of them are mentioned in different places, but in the seventh canto, fifteenth chapter, chapter number fifteen, which I think is the final chapter in that in the seventh canto. Um, if you go through that chapter, you'll find it is the antidote for various types of an artist. Okay. Seventh Thank you, much. Fifteenth chapter, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Shri Devi Mataji, we are back to you. Hari Bol. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, Thank Guru you. Maharaj, I'm just trying to uh, understand the answer you gave uh, Vanija Mataji about asking relatives to chant the holy name when they are suffering and pain, etc. Now, even when we tell them when they are well to please chant, they don't listen. So when they are in pain, what is the chance that they are going to take it seriously and listen when they cannot even chant when they are well or they are so desperate and in so much pain that they might actually try it? Yeah, the pain is an impetus, impetus for chanting. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they say there's no, no atheists in the foxholes. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Actually, I was scrolling down uh, Bhagavatam 7.15 and true, uh, dear devotees, text 23, 24, they all talk about, uh, for example, by discussing spiritual knowledge, one can conquer lamentation and illusion by serving a great devotee. One can become prideless. So these are some of the formulas given there. Please do uh, read those 7.15.23 and then they, are, they continue with 24. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That was such a beautiful class and so many praman from Shastras himself you gave, Maharaj. And of course, <laughs> you are Guru, Saguru, Shadu and Shastra, everything is there, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was such a beautiful class with the, so many beautiful questions from devotees from all over the world. So, dear devotees, um, let us finish the class here because Maharaj is being traveling. He has traveled from India yesterday. He's in London and tomorrow he will travel again. So let us uh, pay our obeisances to Maharaj and all the assembled Vaishnavas. Can everybody <coughs> mute them, themselves? What? Yeah. Can everybody unmute? Perfect. Vancha Kalapataru his Holiness Chandra Maharaj Ki Jai. 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 Jai.